girl, come on. Good girl. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over teaching your husky recall, the word come, and uh, off leash recall, uh, all kind of in one video. Basically what that entails is, first I'm going to teach you guys how to teach your husky what the word come means. Then what you're gonna wanna do is teach your dog uh, how to come from a, from a far distance or if they're distracted, and then how to introduce them to the e-collar and teach them come that way. So we're gonna go over those three main points in this video today. For starters, um, I do kind of want to talk about a little bit in terms of how you go about training a husky in the first place because they're a harder breed to train. You can do one of two things. Uh, most huskies are very food driven, so you just need to get a good high incentive treat. The one that we use is uh, Zook's Mini Naturals. That's the ones we're going to be using for this video. I use a few different kinds, but for this video, these are the ones we're going to be using. Before you start training your husky, one of the vital parts of training a husky is making sure that they're well exercised before you do a bunch of training with them because if you don't, they're gonna have a really hard time focusing, they're probably gonna be all over the place and they're probably not really gonna learn that much from it. Voodoo already went and ran around a bunch before we filmed this video, so she is already tuckered out from that. You don't want them to be completely exhausted because then they won't wanna do anything with you, so you have to find kind of a balance in between uh, being super, super high energy and then being exhausted. There's a nice, fine balance. And with Huskies, that's pretty easy to find. Usually I recommend with puppies that are between the ages of two, two months and four months old, I would only do a very small amount of physical exercise beforehand. Once you have about the three to four month range, you might wanna go take them out for a short walk or play tug before you do or um, just kind of exercise, play with them that way. And then anywhere from six months up, um, I would do 30 minutes plus of exercise. And then you can come home and they'll be much more focused for training. So first what I'm gonna teach you is uh, how to teach them the word come and what that means. I usually recommend only using treats for starters and then once you hit about the six month range is when they kind of start pushing things. That's when I start introducing things like prongs and e-collars. Okay, so for starters, you might not see my head uh, cause I'm just gonna stand up and do this with Voodoo. There's two ways that you can do this. Either you can have them do a sit and stay and then teach them come. Or if you have a puppy, it's pretty easy cause they're little. You can kind of lure them into coming back to you and that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do for right now is I'm just gonna have her Come here. I'm just gonna come here and have her do a sit. Okay, and have a stay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna teach basic what the word come means. Okay, stay. I'm just gonna take one step back. Come. Yes, good girl. That is all you need to start with puppies or with full grown dogs. That's the easiest way to start. You wanna start by literally not giving them any way to fail. Okay, stay. Take one step back. Yes, good girl. So now I'm gonna try something, okay? So once you try that a few times, it's pretty hard for them to fail with that. Have them do it again. This time you're gonna take a couple of steps back. Stay. Take one step and two steps, come. Good girl, yes. Once you do that a couple of times, take three, four steps back just until they get used to it. And then you can kind of get to the point where uh, they can do a, you, you can say come and they'll come from anywhere in the house. Okay, so now what I'm gonna show you guys is how you train come from a farther distance. I don't know if I'll quite be able to get everything in the frame, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have Voodoo do a sit stay in the other room and then I'm gonna say come and then she will come in here. That's all. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here. Good girl, yes, and we got both dogs. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much how you uh, train a dog how to come in the house. Always, always good to train them in the house first or in a very controlled environment like this. So next we're gonna take the dogs to the park. I'm going to have Voodoo off leash there, and first I'm gonna show you how to teach a dog how to come on a long line. I'm gonna teach you how to introduce the e-collar to your dog and teach them recall that way. So let's go do that right now. Okay guys, we're at the park now, and this is where we'll be training after we've already touched on teaching her the word come. Voodoo is already, very well knows the, f the full word come. She knows what it means. She has full recall, so it's gonna be a little bit easier with showing you guys how to train her than it will be 
for you guys with a puppy or with a younger husky or maybe a husky that's older that doesn't know the word come. What we do with Voodoo is we do work her on an e-collar. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like e-collar training, but with a high drive dog like a husky or a German Shepherd or a Doberman or any of those kind of breeds, they actually do really, really well on an e-collar. It helps them to stay focused and it really helps to fine tune their recall. The one that we use specifically is the Mini Educator. I'll link it down below in this video if you guys are interested in purchasing one. The collar itself is this right here. It does have a vibrate mode on here. We don't use it too often, uh, but with training recall, I actually do use the vibrate button more than the shock button just because some dogs are more in tune with that, some dogs aren't. It really just depends on the dog. You kind of have to figure out for yourself what your dog's more comfortable with. I do use treats, so I have, I do use balanced training where I use positive reinforcement like treats and praise and stuff like that, and I also use an e-collar because I find that that is the best way for Voodoo and a lot of other high drive dogs that I've trained before. So these are really, really good to use. And then we don't necessarily have a long lead, but we have this really, really long piece of paracord, which works exactly the same. You don't have to go out and buy a long lead to do this. You can use whatever you have sitting around at home. And we have this paracord. I do recommend using something like a martingale if you have one with training this kind of stuff because it makes it a little bit easier to pull them back to you. I know a lot of puppies have really loose puppy neck skin and sometimes they can slip out of your collar and if they don't have good recall already, it's not gonna be easy to train them if they're already off their collar and you don't have any way to get them back. So make sure that you have something like a martingale that tightens just a little bit so it doesn't slip over their head. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna slip this over Voodoo's head and I'm gonna show you guys how you just start teaching them what the word come means. I kind of already showed you in the house how to teach them what the word come means, so now we're gonna practice it out in the real world with distractions, weird smells, somewhere new maybe, uh, and for her, her sister Opal is here with us too, so that'll be a good distraction to use. <laughs> Did she get the ball out? <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do to start is, uh, for this, all I'm gonna use is the paracord and I'm gonna use the treats that I have. So the easiest way to teach your dog what the word come means, uh, is, well, at least just longer distances and distractions is you kind of just let them walk around and kind of explore a little bit. Go release. Okay, so release is Voodoo's word, so she's pulling, she's looking, okay? So when I want her to come back to me, what I say is, Voodoo, come. And I give a little bit of pressure on the leash, good, yes. And thankfully, if your dog is really, really food driven like Voodoo is, it's really easy to teach them this stuff because they really just want to do anything they can for food. Go release, go run. Okay, so now I'm gonna let her go out a little bit farther on this. And I'm just gonna kinda let her sniff and get a little bit distracted. Okay, Voodoo, come. Come here. Yes, good girl, yes. Awesome job, good girl. Good, okay, go release. Okay, so then I'm just gonna kinda let her walk around, kinda sniff, I'll let her get a little bit more distracted. She can go, go walk and sniff around. Good girl. This is really good. And if your dog decides to stay kind of close to you, and if you like that kind of thing, just make sure to say, you know, good girl and praise them. Because it's always a good thing to let them know that if they're close to you, it's a good thing. Because, I mean, you don't want to have to tell them to come back to you constantly. Okay, Voodoo, come. Come here. Yes. Good girl. Good job. So with teaching this kind of stuff, with just the long line and a flat collar, you're just kind of waiting for them to kind of get used to what the word come means. And so once they know what the word come means and they say, okay, when you say come, you want me to come back to you. So what I just did with Voodoo, just let her go out in the long line. Ah, sit yet. With her going out in the long line and kind of sniffing around, getting distracted and having me say come and coming back to me, what that's doing for her is it's teaching her what the word come means and it's really solidifying that word. So the real test is when Voodoo decides that she sees a bird or another dog or a person that she wants to go run and play with or she gets distracted. Her big thing is like little animals, horses, stuff like that. So when that kind of stuff happens, especially with Huskies, the word come will go right over their head for the most part. If you don't have a really, really solid come and they just kind of are going all over the place and they're not really listening, then even if they've done it before, it doesn't really do any good. I cannot tell you how many times you've been out and about and there are people who think that their dog knows what the word come means and all they do is shout it over and over and over and over and over and their dog doesn't come back and it's just not good for you, it's not good for the dog, and it just... It's not safe either. It's not safe, exactly. We've had a lot of instances where I've had to stick my foot out to keep dogs away from Voodoo because 
their owner is just over there shouting come and not doing anything and their dog's just sitting there not listening at all. The other th reason that that's a bad thing is because especially with dogs like this that are pushy and they're high drive, if they learn even one time that when you say come, they don't have to come back and you're not gonna enforce it, they won't keep coming back to you. It's really that simple. Even with Voodoo, who we've taught the word come from the day that we got her, she still has her moments where if she's not wearing her e-collar, if she sees something and she wants to go for it, sometimes if I yell come, she doesn't come back. For the most part, she does. We've only had a couple of times where she hasn't. So with that said, that's basically the biggest, most important thing is that you need to make sure that when you say come, they have to come back to you because if you even let it slip a couple of times, they're gonna learn that they don't have to listen to that word, they only do if they want to. And that's not what you want because if there's a bird across the street and there's cars coming and your dog says, I don't have to listen this time, they're gonna get hit by a car or their life's gonna be in danger. So it's your responsibility to make sure that you're taking care of them in that sense. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to properly fit an e-collar. Now, there is a guy on YouTube, his name is Sean, Sean O'Shea and he owns and runs the Good Dog Training and he is who I learned all of this stuff from. He's absolutely incredible. He has amazing videos on YouTube already showing you how to train your dog, how to condition them to an e-collar. He's absolutely amazing. I will try to find his video if I can and link it down in the description if I remember to do that. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna show you guys, this was uh, Seth's idea. <laughs> we're gonna show you guys that the e-collar does not actually hurt. Uh, this one specifically is used for training purposes and so it actually works more like a TENS unit rather than an actual electrical shock. So as you can see, it's at level 23. This one actually does go up to level 100. Okay, so he's at 20. He's got it on his fingers. Might have to turn the collar on. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, when it turns red, it's actually shocking him. It doesn't hurt. Nope. It's just kind of like a tens unit. It just sends an electrical impulse into the muscles. It actually kind of feels good with all my climbing fingers. <laughs> it tenses up their neck muscle to kind of tell them, hey. Bricks are focused on their concentration on what they were going after. Exactly, yes. So this is kind of just showing you guys, this is with shock, by the way, not vibrate. This is shocking his hand and his fingers. And it doesn't hurt. You could do it all day. Yep, doesn't hurt at all. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to properly put the e-collar on Voodoo's neck. The number one mistake that a lot of people make with using e-collars is that they don't have that on the right place on their dog or they don't have a proper contact point. Make sure that you put the long prongs on to make sure it's touching their skin because if it's not and they turn their head the wrong way and you're like, hey, they're not listening and you're like turning it up, turning it up and you finally hit them and they have their neck the right way, you're gonna hit them way too high and they're gonna either yelp or they're gonna get freaked out. So it's just not a good thing to do. So make sure that this the prongs are long enough for their fur. So the number two thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure it's on the right spot on their neck. So where it needs to go is it needs to go right here next to their neck. Now as you can see, Voodoo is not afraid of the e-collar. She doesn't dislike it in any way. It's just another form of training. She's not scared of it, clearly. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it right here. And if you feel they're on their neck, they've got a neck muscle just like this on our neck. So you're kind of going to want to try to position it right there, just right behind their ear right there. And then what you do is you're just going to want to kind of cinch it down. You don't want it to be too loose and you don't want it to be too tight because if it's too loose, it can move around on their neck and it can chafe on their skin and that can actually cause sores. The actual prongs themselves, if you're correcting with it, will not cause sores. Uh, the only thing that will is if it's chafing on their neck. So where it's positioned right on her neck, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cinch it down, not too tight, but just where it feels a little snug, make sure you can still get two fingers underneath there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pull the fur, not hard, but just kind of move it around underneath the prongs to really make sure that you've got a good contact point. Just kind of make sure it's getting through all that fur. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you teach your dog to come with a correction on the e-collar because the biggest mistake people make with these is they just slap them on their dog. Like if their dog either isn't listening to the word come, doesn't know the word come, doesn't have good recall, any of those reasons, most of those are why people buy an e-collar. So if you just go out, buy an e-collar, slap it on your dog like this and have them take off running and then you say come, they don't come back and you just sit there and shock them or vibrate them, your dog's not gonna know what the heck to do. They're gonna freak out. It's really easy to do it the right way, but it's also really easy to not do it the right way if you don't do enough research. So with the mini educator, these two buttons on the side, the black and the red, are both shock. This is 
quick shock and this is you can hold down for up to 10 seconds this button over here is the vibrate this is the only button I'm gonna be using today so you literally do the exact same thing you just change one thing and I will show you what that is in a second so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you teach your dog recall with the e-collar on at this point I'm expecting that you guys have already probably done this back and forth with the paracord thing at least 10 times and I would do it probably two to three sessions separately over the course of like two to three days maybe a week if you don't have time to do it in that space but make sure that they really understand that when you say come you want them to come right back to you go release okay so she's gonna go around kind of sniff get a little bit distracted again okay now I've got the e-collar now what I'm gonna do is when I say come I'm going to just tap the vibrate button and do the exact same thing with a little bit of pressure on the collar okay voodoo come good girl yes okay so she's gonna go smell some stuff voodoo come yes good girl good yes good girl okay kind of let her go far away a little bit voodoo come yes good girl sit yet Good. So I don't think I saw that when uh, she was sniffing, but she didn't come the first time when I said come. So what I did was, once I said come, I, I gave her half a second to think about it, and then I tapped the vibrate button, and she immediately turned around and came right back to me. And that was just with vibrate, that was not with shock. Don't make your dog reliant on the button. Give them a couple of chances in between your sessions if you feel like they're getting a lot better with coming back to you right away. So. That's basically how you do it, and you just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, and then with this, you can eventually just let them off leash. Okay, so now we're gonna take this off of her, and as a reminder, only do this if you trust that they will come back when you hit the button. Now, what we'll do is we'll play a little bit of fetch with Opal. Okay, ready? Let's go. Good girl. Okay, so that kind of covers the gist of how to teach your husky to be off leash initially. And some huskies do really, really well without an e-collar, but most huskies you kind of do as they get older need to require, use the, an e-collar on them. You want it to be a positive experience for them because believe it or not, e-collars can be a positive experience. And a lot of people don't think they can, but they definitely can be if it's done right. That's all I have for you guys for the video today. I know that this was really, really requested from a lot of you and I wanted to kind of come out with more training videos for you guys. We will be coming out with more training videos in the future. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, any negative or harassing comments about the tools that I use, choose to use with my dog will just be deleted and you will be blocked. I really don't care about that kind of negativity. I believe that whatever training method works for your dog, works for your dog. If you want to just use positive reinforcement training, that's totally fine. If you want to use just prongs, that's fine. If you want to use all the tools, that's totally fine as long as you're doing it right I don't care with that being said I hope that you guys enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to our channel because we put out videos every other day make sure you give this video a like and comment any other video suggestions that you have and make sure to also comment if you guys liked this video if you found it educational or if there are things that you wanted me to uh, touch on from the video because if there is I can always make a follow-up video with a bunch of questions if you guys have them